Next question from India, from uh, Banjo Kaur, down to earth. Banjo, can you hear us? Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, Dr. Ryan, uh, you must be aware that India, as part of its lockdown, is witnessing unprecedented humanitarian crisis in the form of movement of migrants from one part of the country to other. I do understand that you do not like commenting on individual countries, but this is an unprecedented humanitarian crisis. So what would be your advice to our government? And second question, it's, it's not a question, it's just a clarification. Uh, none of our uh, none of the situation reports given by WHO says community transmission is happening in any of the countries. Uh, while we do know it is happening, so could you please clarify on that? Can you just repeat the second part of your question? Uh, I I said the the situation reports which WHO gives us every day. Uh, there are countries and the stage of transmission mentioned against those countries. Against none of the country, there is mention of community transmission, while we do know that some countries are witnessing community transmission. So, could you please clarify on that? Yeah, I, I think we'll go back and look at our websites and, and see if uh, the, the situation there. We, we, I don't believe we've indicated that there is no community transmission in, in somewhere like, like India, but we, we will definitely check that. But going back to, I think, what is the more important part of your question, which is the 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 impact of uh, of, of of lockdowns, uh, movement restrictions in in any situation are very number one uh, need to be taken very carefully, um, and two, obviously, uh, regardless of their intent, uh, uh, are, are very difficult to accept uh, by communities and, and and by others because people need to move and want to move for family reasons, for economic reasons, and, and for, for many other reasons. Um, and it's important that governments communicate openly and transparently with their people as to the reasons why lockdowns or shutdowns or movement restrictions are occurring, because they do impinge on people's freedom of movement. And if people and communities are to offer up that freedom of movement, they do need to understand why that's happening. Uh, it's also, uh, and those move, those movement restrictions uh, are regrettable uh, in all situations. Nobody wants to see those happen. But in situations where you have a very, very intense epidemic in one part of a country and another part of a country, it's not so intense, you may have to implement some measure uh, to at least encourage. Sometimes it's advice. Sometimes it's strong advice, and sometimes it's a restriction where transport is stopped. Uh, each government has to choose the, the balance between what is advice to communities and what is, uh, a, 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 what is in some senses, an enforced uh, lockdown. Uh, whatever is chosen, it's really important that communication and acceptance by the community is at the center of the concern of the government. It is impossible to have an effective... Um, restriction of movement without a community on board with that restriction of movement at all levels. Uh, and as the DG said in his speech, when such measures are put in place, it's exceptionally important that those measures are carried out uh, with not only the acceptance, but with the human rights and dignity of the people affected at the centre. Uh, now, that is not always easy. Uh, but that is what should be as part, at, at centre of the objective of the process. And I'm not here speaking specifically about India, I'm speaking about uh, this in general terms. But I think what it does speak to is that these society-wide measures are difficult. They are not easy. Uh, and they are hurting people. Uh, but the alternative is even worse. And Countries, if they're going to be able to move away from this approach of, of having to lock down and shut down, if we're going to move away from that approach as a means of suppressing the virus, we have got to put in place the public health surveillance, the isolation, the quarantine, the case finding, the detection. We have got to be able to show that we can go after the virus because lockdowns alone will not work. But unfortunately, in some situations right now, there the only measure that governments can actually take to slow down this virus. 
Uh, and, and that's unfortunate, but that is the reality. And we need to continually explain the reasons for this to our communities. So, thank you. This is uh, a very important question. Um, maybe on the first one, uh, based on the transmission in countries, WHO has categorized actually countries into four. There are countries with no cases, what we call the four Cs. No cases are a yeah, group of countries. And then the second is countries with sporadic uh, cases. And the third is cases, uh, countries uh, with clusters of cases. And the fourth is community transmission. And we have now a number of countries with community transmission. And that's why we have developed a guideline that's tailored to these four situations. And please check our website and you will find the four Cs and the four categories and what should be done based on, on this. But we have community transmission in many countries and we have said it many times. And then on the um, issue of um, uh, lockdown, so-called lockdown, maybe, um, uh, you know, some countries have already taken measures for physical distancing, closing schools and preventing gatherings and so on. That can buy, buy time. But at the same time, uh, each and every country actually differs. Some countries, have strong social welfare system. And some countries don't. And I'm from Africa, as, as you know. And I know many people actually have to work every single day to win their daily bread. And governments should take this population into account, okay? If we're closing or if we're limiting movements, what is it going to happen to those people who have to work on daily basis and have to earn their bread on daily basis? So each and every country based on its situation should answer this question. We're not seeing it as an economic impact on a country, as an average of uh, GDP loss or, uh, you know, the economic uh, repercussions. We have to also see what it means to the individual in, in the street. And maybe I have seen it, said it many times, and um, uh, I come from a poor family, and I know what it means to always, uh, you know, worry about your daily bread. And that has to be taken into account. Because each and every individual matters. And how each and every individual is affected by our, our, our actions has to be considered. And that's what we're, we're saying. It's about any country. It's not about India, it's about any country on earth. Even the wealthiest country on earth can have people who need to work for their daily bread. No country is immune. Each and every country has to really make sure that this is taken into account. 